presentation, obviously, about VDI Unleashed, uh, and basically talk to you about a reference architecture of how to do things much different than what you what you've maybe seen before. So, with that, just to let you know, I'm obviously with Zyatech now. Zyatech is one of the largest privately held companies, storage companies in the world. Uh, mass number of customers. We've been, we're not the same Zyatech as we were before. You may have heard Zyatech from the past, used to be an SMB play, uh, but certainly consistently ranked now as one of the top you know, vendors in customer satisfaction. Headquarters in Minnesota, however, the bulk of the engineering is in Colorado Springs, where we all used to be at Digital and Compact a long time ago, as well as Hyderabad, India, with guys that used to live in the states that all moved home. But many alliance partners for foremost with VMware, but many others as you see there. You know, it's interesting. I've met with Steve Harrod before with the CTO of VMware and stuff, and VMware puts, you know, VDI pretty succinctly. It's the efficiencies of VDI need to be in place to displace actual desktops, but it's all about cost, quality, performance, and availability. These are things that you kind of maybe take for granted that other arrays can do, but it's not necessarily that clear that it can be done in a consistent way. But VDI is certainly part of a solution that contains virtual servers and VMware for it based on vSphere, et cetera, is there. It's interesting that most companies have moved to server virtualization and are now thinking about implementing VDI. And Zyatech, you know, totally ready to solve this problem with the most efficient, high performance, and scalable and available storage solution, which we call ISE, which is the intelligent storage element, which is essentially, you consider it more like a storage blade. And I'll talk more about that as we go. But it's interestingly with potential challenges with VDI, and I think it's been out there in the press and many bloggers, et cetera, that storage performance will likely be a bottleneck especially when you want to try to do it for the right kind of price. You know, especially if CPU and memory are, are sufficient, then storage performance basically becomes the limiting factor, especially with the storage that's been out there for the last 20 years that people keep trying to keep doing the same thing with just, you know, a couple of array controllers or software and a whole bunch of individual drives. But it's interesting today, you know, I said the diminishing returns with a head and shelves. It's just been wrong, and I, eight years ago, I thought of a different way to do this, and it took a lot of time and a lot of money, in fact, $100 million at, that, at the Seagate to essentially develop the next drive. But otherwise, with the, the other storage of today, it has increased complexity. You know, you pick and talk about multiple smaller arrays, built-in SANs or disks inside of servers. Those are all things that don't necessarily scale well. But legacy SANs, they've added complexity and cost with little benefit. I mean, they really are hard to control. They're not so linear. Uh, and certainly many, many, many virtualization projects have seen this. I've been all around the world, you know, this last year. In fact, this whole, this year in total, I've already traveled 240,000 miles. I've been in every continent except for Antarctica, which is kind of put play nice with what ice is, you know, as far as what it goes. But it's interesting that nearly all the private clouds are virtualized instances of servers, which private clouds are also going to want to do VDI as well. It's interesting, the challenges, you guys see this, virtual servers, you know, growth and sprawl, end-of-life equipment replacement and obsolescence, what a mess to try to keep doing this without having to take your systems down, you know, excessive maintenance dollars, that, that fourth and fifth year, all this kind of stuff. We challenge all that kind of stuff with basically saying the hardware, or the, the, the actual stuff that's in your infrastructure should last a lot longer than that. You shouldn't have to pay for service. But then there's always the growing expectations. Everybody in the CIO always has expectations, but without budget, do stuff more with less. You know, deliver ever greater services on a fixed budget or a, le a lesser budget, especially with the way the economy is today. You know, growing storage requirements. Does it ever get smaller? You know, it always gets bigger. Growth, especially with the government putting more things in place, let alone your, your desktops. Dedupe helps in some ways, but it's still going to grow. And you look at physical desktop cost begets virtual desktop obvious, right? To me, it goes back to, well, I'm, I'm probably one of the older guys in the room, but that deck, you know, we had, you know, we had terminal servers based on you know, mini computers and all this other kind of stuff. It's just bringing the stuff back with more open systems, which is great. But both primary and backup storage basically end up hitting that back end when you have to do that kind of stuff. But if you look at it, consolidation of the physical infrastructure is really good. That was where, you know, the promise of SAN a long time ago but it was how did you scale it, how do you get past it, stuff's blown that out. But basically the performance bottlenecks end up moving downstream. 
the very fast CPUs waiting for data from relatively slow storage. You can optimize with different ways of doing software or integration with the arrays, but still at the end you still have to have base level performance for the right price. And, you know, squeezing the balloon is what's going on. You know, but virtualized environments, especially today, and I see it with many customers all over the world, enterprise to small business, medium business, doesn't matter. They're all starved for storage performance due to the consolidation effect is bad, and you end up buying more storage than you need. You try to plug bottlenecks with maybe SSDs today, et cetera, versus, you know, when they're really ready tomorrow. But it's interesting. IDC says the users are pushing the virtual server environments to the limits, which has caused all these problems. You know, sprawl, storage, I.O. bottlenecks, it's all there. People are really realizing this stuff. You know, basically within the past six months, you know, you look at the claim have, have, have had I.O. problems. You know, what's the timing? How do you get things? How do you scale? You know, status of virtualization. So it's interesting. IT still is considered a cost center, you know, because they just think, oh, my gosh, we've got to spend all this money, whatever. It's, but, but it's about how do you look for efficiencies. But density and efficiency become very much paramount, you know. As long as quality, reliability, and other factors don't, but often do conflict, because really people want the density and the efficiency, but they expect it to be available and reliable, which doesn't always play, especially with SATA drives and how, how people deal with individual drives. You know, more capacity per rack floor, all this other kind of stuff, less power and cooling, fewer outages and interventions is what people want with increased availability. Summary, everybody wants to reduce spend per unit input. It's just, it seems obvious, but it's all about, you know, peace would be it. So that's why in a lot of cases, CFOs and stuff have stepped in to basically say, well, we're going to help with your IT budget, which then drives you guys nuts because you're just like, just leave me alone and let me do my business. So we're here to help, but you look at other things, other storage challenges. You know, the growth is growing exponentially. Backup is getting worse. You know, replication is, is certainly a big deal. But luckily, you know, a lot of that stuff is becoming more at the application level or other, which is what it should be, versus what happened, you know, when 20 years ago when array controllers popped out, you know, that started doing DR and such, it was mainly because Windows and Linux weren't growing up yet and uh, they didn't, people didn't want to buy proprietary systems because they used to be in VMS and all these other things, just native. But it's interesting. A lot of organizations are turning to, you know, hopeful for the cloud thing, and they, they say, hey, look, we're, our own organization is inefficient. It doesn't have to be that way. Especially when you start doing outsourcing, you take on a lot of other problems. So look at it. I mean, it's hosting a desktop operating system. For me, it's still terminal serving, again, and doing it in a very efficient way to make it so it's cheaper to do this versus having to buy PCs for people. It's one of those things where been there, done that. Now it's about how do you, how do you give them consistent performance and this kind of stuff. So for me, what's the target? Companies moving to virtual server, desktop infrastructure. That's the virtual value proposition. You know, you've got to retain service levels and response times. People can't be sitting there waiting for, you know, their terminal to come back because they're going to be saying, hey, I'd rather have a PC. It's going to cause a mess once you try to do it. Many people in the financial industry haven't done it because they just know they're hitting stuff where they can't do it with your normal big arrays. You know, and you said the problem the collapsing down the infrastructure, performance bottlenecks that you're not aware of yet. Or if you were aware of it, you're like, that's why you're not wanting to go to VDI. You know, they're starved for performance. We talk about it with VDI impact on storage. You can go look at this yourself, and obviously this, this presentation will be online. The solution for me, and I, you know, not, is, I've been after this for a long time, is high performance. It also means sustained performance, reliability, and always available storage. It can be done. We put a man on the moon 40 years ago. We could do this stuff, you know, and optimize storage for virtual environments, which means making it very easy to provision, reprovision, move things around, linearly scale, et cetera. So it's interesting. We talk about at, at Ziotech, et cetera, is that, you know, the storage for virtual server has to be able to integrate, automate storage management across a storage array, hypervisor slash OS, VDI. It's all about automation. If you can do all that kind of stuff and do it in a simple way, you've got the game. You've got to deliver I.O. performance required to basically, same as load this physical infrastructure, reduce the footprint, reduce it, make it more efficient, make it use things more effectively so you don't waste time, waste money, and waste capacity. You know? Scale linearly. That's where's that been? You know, array can stand array controllers, et cetera, don't really scale very linearly. You know, you get to a certain point and you're already at the point where you're not going to get any more performance. You end up having to buy a new head and a new, new batch of stuff. 
you know, scale CapEx, you know, basically don't have to make massive upfront inputs, buy when you need it, you know, you should be able to do that, that's where, where we feel. And then you get the shared storage benefits out of that if you have storage that can actually be multi-tenancy. And then you talk about that, and in general, that means it's, it would be a foundation for virtual desktop environments and any virtual environment for that matter. You look at this, you talk about you know, storage blades in a virtual environment being able to handle elevated I.O. stress, you know, basically handle backup, I.O. overhead, basically work out everything and make it work. This is one of, one of VMware's own slides. But when you get to it, whoops, get to it here. Management, hang on, I can make sure you can't, this is really almost an eye chart here. But basically getting in there with VMware, View Manager, et cetera, all of our software integrates with all of vSphere, et cetera, to basically automate the entire environment. Two years ago, we won the award here behind Storage vMotion for being able to integrate and set up you know, virtual uh, machines with like three clicks on one screen. But if you really look at it, back to this whole thing about where storage is, mentally, if not physically, storage is still in the big iron face. But it's really interesting when you think about that because storage sits at the bottom of the stack. What does it know about the application? You know, I say it's ill-placed. You look at all the features that have come out of array controllers the last 20 years, and I, I'm one of the guilty parties. You know, it's a bunch of the patents for my team, like a couple hundred of them that HP now still owns, basically is all things on provisioning, replication, migration, performance tooting, rep, you know, everything. Doing all this stuff here is just, it's crazy because it doesn't make sense when the application is the one that what knows what's going on. And you talk about the traditional array storage shelves is still strong, but it has inherent problems. And the only reason it hasn't changed is nobody's wanted to invest in that because they think so software, investing in software is cheaper and free when you're not focusing on the bottom end, which is like the foundation of everything. Because in general, with array heads, you don't have the linear scalability. You basically increase the purchase because you're buying more drives to get the performance, and you end up short stroking and all kinds of things like that. But then you look at, as the number of storage shelves in array increases, the chances for reliability events, failures, downtimes, you know, uh, slowdowns, all occur, drive you nuts. People out there talking, you know, with like even Google talking about 10 to 13 percent failure rates in drives, that's crazy. Not when drives, drives are not basically unreliable. They are basically reliable when you understand how they get built. In SSD, it's coming, there's no question. But I've tested every SSD on the planet and right now the price still is way high up there per gigabyte, can't get the density, let alone you can't get the consistent performance out of them. They will get there eventually and whether it's with flash or with some other kind of technology, whether it's resistive memory or uh, things like uh, spin RAM, it'll get there. It's just a matter of doing it. But the interesting part with that, just so people know, most everybody that's doing SSDs out there are not storage guys, they're memory guys. And an SSD is essentially an array controller with a bunch of channels. An SSD today is essentially like an array controller from like 12 years ago. If you were to take apart one, you'd be amazed. And it's like, who's building these things? It's interesting. But I'll say the future storage. I say the cloud's already here. It just has a lot of different names. People call it grid, call it, people call it, you know, it's your IT infrastructure. It's already a cloud in and of itself, but it's a private one. You're just trying to work on automating. You're trying to make it work yourself. For me, I say storage has to work, you know, fit the cloud model for VDI, for virtualization, everything. It needs to be able to commission and decommission storage rapidly without any manual intervention. You need to be able to adapt to rapid changes of usage patterns. Obvious, especially with VDI, people are going to have big times, 8.30 in the morning to the different part of the day. It has to be able to ride through all that stuff, let alone the whole rest of your, all of the rest of your apps in your environment. You have to be able to, I say storage should be told what to do by layers above. It shouldn't try to be the master. You know, when I did storage back at DEC and, and early compact stuff, that's the way it was because the operating systems were smarter, the storage software, the software that was in, in the host is smarter. We're there. I mean, whether it's a really smart volume manager or VMware built-in kind of stuff, it's there. You don't need all these different features inside of arrays per se. You maybe want to have different options with different presentations. You'll see that here. But in general, it needs to be scalable without requiring any step changes in deployment. And in short, and I think other people have tried to copy this lately with some other press announcements, storage needs to be invisible. I liken storage, storage should be a brick in a wall for IT that never goes away. So I say this is the attributes of intelligent application storage. 
And storage, which is able to actually get into this, is going to basically have a massive advantage over those that don't. And our mission is certainly to become that. If you provide reliable, high-performance storage on with well-known and constant metrics, as in it's going to keep delivering you the same performance across multiple users at the same time or multiple applications at the same time, even if something might be going wrong inside, that's what, that's what our intelligent storage blade is. But provide features to require to meet the needs of each individual application, you know, including VDI. Provide a single point of control with basically APIs that are open and are managed just like how the cloud is going to be managed. And we call that Cortex with our, and our ICE manager and our ICE analyzer, all of which has been on the floor. People may have seen that have been in here already using APIs that are based on REST, which is the way the cloud is going. So to give you an introduction of why and how this thing provides the consistency for virtual environments and specifically VDI, ICE is an interesting element that is, doesn't, it, it looks like a box, right? It's through you. It's very different, however. It is a building block of performance, data integrity, and recovery-oriented storage. We coined the term self-healing. Self-healing doesn't mean RAID rebuilds. Self-healing means whenever something's going on, it doesn't lose performance. Self-healing means that it lasts five to ten years, not something that lasts just, you know, three years and you have to pay maintenance forever. It uses these interesting things called data packs, which actually fix the environment. You, know, you guys may have seen things out there on the web with a, a video, viral video out there. It was called Don't Yell at Your J-Bods. Because realistically, if you do, it will affect performance. You walking by your systems will affect the performance. You will affect the life of your drives just by putting them in shelves in the first place. You probably never thought about that because they don't want you to know that stuff. When I look at stuff, you know, we, our element today is basically, you know, active-active dual-port controllers with fiber channel, full duplex, does a gigabyte a second, this kind of stuff. With guaranteed metrics, you can analyze what's going on, understand how many users it's going to meet. You'll see everybody touting numbers on how much you can reach in terms of how much per VDI user. Ours is about, basically about $25 per VDI user, and that, that's the lowest in the industry by a far piece. And that means those are guaranteed numbers, and you don't have to pay for the service, so you're not having to pay recurring stuff. But linear performance scale, no one can say that. Storage has always been like calculus, linear reliability scale, and the world's best efficiency because storage costs money. Storage costs money from the standpoint of your initial price, but everything after that, from power, from, from outages, from what people have to do to manage it, et cetera. We developed this technology you know, from 2002 to 2007, and it was spun off from, from uh, Seagate to Ziotech in 2007. Seagate still owns 20% of this. But basically, it changes the world in a lot of ways. You know, things like, you know, mirrored right back cache. These are things that are always used to be inside of big arrays. This is, this is essentially the next generation drive that's smart enough to work in virtual environments without having to have all that extra baggage on top of it. Active, active. You don't need multipathing anymore. It just works. You get the same performance both sides. It makes it easier to not have to pay for drivers, you know? One footprint, you look on the side with these data packs, one footprint to handle all kinds of different storage requirements, each one with their own different QoS as we move forward. And you look at things like managed reliability. This is something that I'll talk about a little bit later. This is the part with VDI and virtual environments. You count on the reliability and availability. Otherwise, things are going to go wrong, and people are not going to be these SLAs, and they're going to say, I want to go back to my, my damn PC. You know? We basically have been able to show, with two years of experience, and you'll see it later, that you can not have failures. You can not have no trouble found. You basically can ride through issues when drives have stuff problems. You can have consistency. We did all this stuff with real technology, and it's basically, you can talk about being green. It's about efficiency. Lowest power, most IOs, everything else like that. When you look at this stuff going forward, let's get into this. We have two years of experience with this device with basically 0.4, no returns of, of drives, basically 0.4% failure rate inside, which leads to about 0.1% replacement in five years. That is also coupled with twice the IOs per drive. No one can touch this. Anybody even doing other array integration things like, well, VAAI is interesting, it only you know, optimizes things. It doesn't get to the base level of performance to what you do. 
we basically do things with improved environmentals. We negate all the things that make drives die, whether they're SSDs or hard drives. You have to fix the environment first. So I would be, urge you to take a look at this. You know, recondition, preventative reconditioning. We actually remanufacture the drives in place using the same firmware that Seagate did to develop to make the drive in the first place. We do that while it's running. You know, we do a lot of different stuff. End-to-end -end checks. There's nobody in the industry that does diff, which is an end-to-end -end check on the data to, pre to prevent data corruption. Because one thing you really don't want in a VDI environment is any kind of data corruption. That'll really mess you up. But otherwise, we repair things. We fix things in place, and we do things like a satellite. You know, basically things like this is it's, it's a satellite. It's not coming home. We get telemetry. We work in open environments. We work in dark environments. It doesn't matter as far as being able to get that data back because it's about telemetry to basically do the feedback control system. You know, we basically monitor things. We're shipping drives out there today that other OEMs haven't even been able to ship yet because they can't get them to work right with the software, with the, how they do things with the race. Our feedback mechanism allows us to do different things that other people cannot do. And you talk about drive reliability of 1,000x, that leads to us basically giving a five-year warranty. That really gets to the whole thing of people being able to make decisions outside the normal bounds of what they've done before, especially in PDI. But if you look at it, reprising requirements, you know, being able to recommission storage or commission it, adapt to changes, ability to be told what to do, easily scalable. ISE absolutely meets these requirements in a totally different way at, you know, multiples less cost of purchase and capex than other arrays. We're not about, you know, trying to gouge people or whatever, trying to say you need to buy more or whatever, because we, we basically give you what we say we, we'd give you. But you look at industry-leading TCO, everything in the world of virtual environments is about TCO. How do I make it work? VDI is the most stressful because otherwise people are going to say, I really have to save me money to want to go to VDI. Given a five-year warranty, low operating costs, basically once you buy it, you really don't have any other costs, and our costs are more than competitive with anybody in the industry. High performance, sustained performance regardless of utilization. We actually get the same performance across the entire drive. That's not done by, you know, smoke and mirrors. We did that by integrating with the drives directly. We're doing the same things with SSDs as we, as we move forward to get all the linear pieces out of it. Active, active controllers. Can't say enough about that. You would see that. You, you would have always would have asked for guys, you know, that were doing arrays. We wanted active, active drives. Never, they never could get there. This is an active, active drive. Gives you all the ability to do what you want, whether it's IOs or bandwidth. You get everything out of it. And manage reliability, it's about life extension. You know, why, why, pay? why pay for something that you only get a year or three year warranty on when you can get five? It saves money. It's all about that. And then it reduces interesting. The interesting part here customers can now rightfully change your buying criteria, especially for, say, any virtual environment, VDI, et cetera, because of these efficiencies. You can actually think about deploying and forgetting storage. It should become invisible and be able to be able to work all the time and be there. Of course, with the fun part, when it gets old enough, you take it home and hook it up to your TiVo because it's going to last our mean. The lifetime of this theoretically is 7 to 13 years, which is interesting because people have never thought about that being the case with drives. They end up wanting to throw them away, do whatever. So I said, ISE achieves twice the average performance per drive in applications. No one can touch that. I mean, that's like, that's, this is technology, not smoke and mirrors. Nobody can get this stuff. Some of, our, some of the drive usage we get, you know, 400, 500 IOs per drive, and these are in random environments. Our data layout, in terms of things, make it work. This allows you to do the multi-tenancy. If I were to get in a lot of technical, I could, sp could spend hours on it, but this is 84 patents associated with this technology. We change the firmware and the drives. We don't make arrays with disk shelves. We make motors. And then drives become working together to work as a team to work on the applications and make them work. Totally different. The hardware design is unique to anything in the industry. And basically, we talk about the only storage vendors, we the only ones that have changed the 25-year-old mentality. Because everybody else wants to make money on service, make, make money on maintenance, keep pushing things. And they'll say it. I think there was an, even a, a thing out there on one of the blogs where I think Zyrotex said, you know, uh, we can't do what we do because uh, we're only single source to Seagate. Well, after two years, it's not a problem because most people want to be, have multiple sources of disk drives because they think they can get a better price 
by going to different guys. What you don't know is buying drives from different people is trying to like mix different cars in the same, you know, different types of cars and try to run a race. They don't work the same and they break in a lot of different ways. We're happy to be single sourced with this. So you talk about extended, you know, standard M Prize 5000 has enough performance to handle over 20,000 exchange users of 1,400 desktops. That was with our previous drive generation. Now we're at like 25,000 exchange users in 3U, up to 2,500 virtual desktops. And this is not with anything. This is $25 per user. You just basically work it out that way. You can really get some efficiencies there. So we talk about managed reliability. You know, you talk about think differently. I mean, you know, probably guys are old enough to know Star Trek with things like Kobayashi Maru and stuff like that. Think differently. We got to start over when we did all that stuff because we were all array guys that used to do stuff with old proprietary stuff, went to SCSI, lost the, lost the stuff. When you do this, you change the rules for everything because if things can actually be reliable, you can count on things. You count on things to basically ruin your business. You know, process, high quality components, rigid drive assembly, all these things. These are all things that are all high volume parts, whatever. Just do it differently. Don't focus on, you know, everything at one level. Mix it in, blend it in, integrate. You know, when in doubt, check it out. I mean, we're already at five nines with respect to our uh, software reliability. This is because we don't have all the extra baggage inside to do a lot of things that array controllers that I was a guilty party on on five generations of storage works arrays, let alone all the stuff back at deck, you know, when, before that with fax clusters. But the combination of these two with design and process, we reduce service events basically almost to zero, you know, and basically extend the life of the product because that way it saves you money because we don't, we, we can get a better price from Seagate for drives, we do all this other stuff and it all returns to value to you, let alone how to run your business. It's interesting, compared to other people, you know, they, we have controllers that have code to manage failure situations. Every other array controller out there just assumes that uh, Mikey's going to come fix it from service and come replace your drive. When in fact, 85% of all drive failures, the drive isn't broken at all. It just needed to get reset, redone. There was a timeout, something happened, and the software inside the array just didn't want to give time because they, they figured, hey, we don't need to spend time on this because somebody will come replace the drive because you're paying for the maintenance. This is essentially a control system, you know, tight integration. We can recover the drive. We can recover. We may remanufacture the drive or partially recover the drive. We can map around bad heads. This is essentially taking bad block replacement to the next level. Very interesting stuff. But being able to adapt to runtime changes allow us to keep performance no matter what and keep it, keep it consistent. This has been proven in all of the benchmarks that we run, all of the tests with customers. I mean, we, we do evaluations for customers all the time, whether it's VDI or virtual environments or anything. But the key part, too, is we use telemetry. We upload it all the way. We watch all of them all the time. That lets us never have an event that might be something related to some process issue with respect to a drive, like what used to happen in the old days, because all these drives get mixed out there and stuff starts happening and you don't know what's going on when it's probably just a simple firmware fix on a drive. Very rarely is it a hardware problem on a drive because drives are certainly little miracles. It takes 16 hours in a process to take a drive from being a piece of carbon you know, like to, to a diamond to make it a real drive because it's all control systems and everything is variable. And you look at it from that point, you know, we, we can manage situations. We've had customers where we were getting weird telemetry out there and their system was running a little bit in here and we started looking at our sensors, you know, the vibration was way high even to, from the external sources. We went down there to the customer and realized they had their, their system right over an air handler. Just move it like five feet to the right and, you know, it's fine. We can actually tell this stuff. You do that with intelligent systems. So we, we basically provide a sealed canister. People would say, well, what happens with the drive fills? Well, the whole thing is you want to prevent the drive from failing in the first place. And if it does, it's probably not going to die all the way anyway. We don't have motor failures. We don't have head crashes. That doesn't happen because you prevent that by putting it in the right environment. People have been mis misconceptions on drives for such a long time. Now, there really is a difference between a SATA drive and an enterprise drive, however. SATA drives are definitely way different, designed for a whole lot less duty cycle. They're designed to only be used for, like, backups and stuff. You try to use those in an environment of exchange or database, you're going to kill it no matter what. There is a difference. But with that in regard, we protect all those things in those environments. 
So basically our whole point is hypervisors, VDI systems, operating systems, to understand storage. We allow them to understand storage in a way that's never been done before. You have so much knowledge of what's going on because things are linear. The way of storage the last many years has been open loop and having to understand calculus and probability and understand what the heck's going on in a system with respect to performance. No wonder why people don't necessarily want to all, always put their benchmarks out there on, say, SPC. So interesting stuff. This is about where it really gets down to meet the road with VDI and any virtual environment. It's about reducing the capital and operating costs. Let you go to five years or longer. Let it sit there and go. Allow you to budget more efficiently. Basically move forward with no hidden costs or hardware outlays. You buy when you need it. You know, fast application deployment because basically you, have a, you know what you're getting and you get to use 100% of what we sell you. You can't do that with other storage. You know, best features of shared and dedicated storage in one, one device. But this t a proper storage chargeback, given I said we give all the data back, you have so much data to look at things. You basically can put it right back in and no expensive complex add-on products, it's all there. You'll see that if you go to our booth and, and check things out. We even have things on, you know, uh, application on iTunes out there so you can basically monitor your systems. But you reduce the purchase risks by running your environment. Because VDI in a lot of cases is something that's a different thing. It's managed by a different group. It's not necessarily tied into IT as much as it might be otherwise with no additional spend. With us, solution flexibility. The fact that we are focused as Ziotech on building intelligent storage blades, we also want to provide you with solutions, whether they're direct attached, you know, ICE, SAN, where basically we have, you know, we're supported by Datacore, Falcon Store, IBM, SVC, HDS, USP. We sell Emprise systems, which are, you know, SAN, SAN systems. We also have clustered NAS with a, with a partnership with Symantec. And we'll all call it ICE pool by using volume managers, whether that's Storage Foundation, Linux, LVM, Microsoft, or ASM from, from Oracle. You can build large systems. We have systems out there that are running databases, and you can compare this to how VDI works, because VDI is going to have a lot of input, you know, people expecting things to run. We have people out there running, you know, 700 billion row databases and doing a billion transactions a day on like 20 ICE and 20 servers. And these are, you know, high end uh, uh, systems that basically end up running on a lot less expensive systems overall. So based on the foundation of ICE and Cortex, Cortex, as I mentioned, was, is our APIs open based on REST. I'll talk about that in a minute. With software that's the ICE manager and ICE analyzer, all built on these same web services integrated with VMware completely. You can actually make it a plug-in in vSphere as well an ICE analyzer, which is the piece where you get all the data you want out of the system to understand things real time. We're introducing a new product that's announced recently, the Emprise 9000, for those that want to buy full featured SANS with block-based fiber channel or ICE SCSI, 250 terabytes per volume, up to six controller pairs, massively scalable system for those that want to have that type of system. You know, basically thin provisioning, synchronous, asynchronous, mirroring, everything you possibly wanted to get in there with ICE at the bottom. So you're not only getting all your storage features, you're getting the foundation at the bottom that gives you the consistent performance and reliability, all backed by the five-year warranty. Then you get to the management platform. We went to REST. REST is basically, if you were to look out there, go to a, a website called cortexdeveloper.com. Basically, it is ba the simplest thing you can possibly make to use it with all gets and puts to be able to do things just with URL-based systems. Easy to script, scalable to the internet. You look at all these things, very simple. It basically just makes everything integratable. So if you want to write your own scripts to automate your environment, let alone use our tools, you can do it. You know, if you go to the cortexdeveloper.com, you'll find all the information on how to do this type of stuff, let alone people that have submitted their own code to it you know, saying words, it's like, I never thought it could be this easy or fun to actually manage storage again because it's such a pain otherwise to set up volumes and manage disks. You don't have to manage disks. You're managing storage as if it was like software now. And the last, we offer a NAS solution, fully clustered NAS based on, you know, with SIFS, NSS, and FTP support, all the different types of systems you want to do to be able to do things with replication. You know, optional standard, this is a 2 to 16 node system, fully clustered. 
So this is basically being able to build any kind of solution you want for any kind of application you want, and whether it be VDI all the way up to virtual servers and databases, et cetera, it all works in place based on the foundation of ICE and Cortex. We make a statement, you know, virtual desktops run better on Zyatek storage space. What is run better? It's back to, you know, VMware's own principles. Performance, availability, and reliability. You gotta be able to count on this stuff because otherwise people are not gonna wanna change and you gotta see that consistently before you're gonna make the change. Otherwise the ups and downs are just gonna cause problems. So we look to talk about increasing the need, you know, we talk about our business, the solutions that we build and offer customers. You know, increase the need to bridge the gap between business drivers and IT needs. You just got to be able to understand the business. You know, the application storage is about this performance and efficiency, whether it's NAS, SAN, or direct attach. You know, impact of, for real business is the byproduct of efficiency and effectiveness. IDC and all these other people start talking about this now. It's becoming a big deal because money counts not wasting. We stand apart from all this because we focus on things like cost per managed terabyte. It also relates to the point we talk about $25 per VDI user. This is important to understand and with no extra cost year to year. You know, the most efficient cost effective way to build a data center, whether it's a regular data center, a cloud, whatever, it's efficiency. It's no longer about jamming as much drives as you can in there and try to assume they're going to get thrown away. So we help the, the customers exploit all of these efficiencies in pursuit of any kind of new revenue models, time to market, improvements in customer service, business resiliency, and of course, VDI. It is the big thing coming. So we talk about do more, buy less, run better. Who could, who could think of any better? It's not too good to be true, it's real. And I urge you to go check things out if you haven't already at our booth. Of course, that's me, that's awful. But uh, as far as enabling things, you can go see all this stuff out there. You can get all the information you ever wanted to see out there on how it applies. So I think I've talked about all this stuff, but the bottom line is Zyatek products are designed to manage your business, not your storage. You should be able to make it invisible. And with that, I'm done. So I can take questions, comments. I just urge you to check it out because the virtualization is so huge for this world and storage being fully virtualized and count you can count on it is important. Yeah, if you can repeat that question, um, the question was basically five-year warranty, uh, no maintenance. You don't pay any maintenance for the for the hardware. Five years. You know that kind of stuff is important to people. Yes. Basically, replication with respect to the solutions, fully replication in terms of you know snapshots, mirrors, async, sync, whatever you want. Ice by itself is meant to be told what to do by other things. So if somebody's doing replication, it's just being told to you know move the blocks. Okay. Yes, go right ahead. I got a long-winded question. No worries. So uh, it's quite clear that you've proven that you have a product that. Uh, it runs, it's solid, it's got the performance that uh, the VDI asked for. Yeah. It's consistent you bet. with the ICE uh, array technology. But have you guys embraced uh, kind of what you're evangelizing, which is higher up the stack, the application level, mm -hmm. with VMware's vStorage API? Have you guys utilized that, developed against that like we a lot will of other storage vendors have? We will do that when it's standard because yeah. the, the commands that are being used are not ratified by SCSI yet. And we will, because their optimization is very similar to what I did in VMS with Storage Works. Yeah. Because we had all that stuff in the prior uh, spec called MSCP mm -hmm. with atomic locking and all these other things. Right. How are we? No problem. Yeah. We'll do that. And we'll do that when it's standard. Gotcha. But otherwise, and it will optimize even further because those optimizations will potentially eat into our lead with respect to the fact that we're already 2x performance and provide consistent performance. Those things will just take it, take it out there to the next level. Because it's certainly these APIs are going to help VMware. Yeah. Because they, they, they change some of the things that were actually things that weren't so great in the architecture before. So, so say it does become a standard. Uh, is that going to be baked in then to the Emprise line? Or are you, is it going to well be something new? 
as ice. Yeah. Because you want to have it as basically be something that's in the solution part. Right. But as a direct attach, you want to be able to do that kind yeah. of stuff. And it depends on what customers want to use in terms of features, because some of those features that are in VAAI don't work against all of the features that VMware does. Sure. But it does accelerate some areas or yeah. helps. It actually makes up for some of the inefficiencies in the other arrays right. temporarily. For us, they can't follow us. We can follow all the standards. Sure. Because sure. this is something that's essentially a new kind of a disk drive. And when we move into SSDs, you'll see some stuff. There was a leak to the press called Katana out there a while back. Just take it to the next level with respect to how things go because it's all about your money. Yeah. So good. Good question. Thanks. You betcha. Yeah. Oh, the question is, is what about deduplication? I mean, we support all the other out, you know, solutions that are out there because obviously we're the end storage. Deduplication in terms of, uh, this is a, me as an architect because I've been a nerd for 31 years you know, with zillions of degrees and all this other junk and working with all the guys. Dedupe is very cool because it once again provides an opportunity to save money. And so when you talk about whether it's out of band dedupe after the fact, or in-band dedupe. In -den, in -den, i got to be shown more of in-band dedupe because that one has the potential of hurting your performance because you're trying to do stuff. When it's out of band and doing it after the fact, that's great because that'll save you money. So the jury's still out on some of the in-band stuff, but we support other appliances that do that kind of stuff in terms of people can make solutions. Our partners do a lot of that stuff with, the, in, with the, you know, channel partners, et cetera, and we'll add those to our portfolio as, well as we control things as well with our APIs. Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, I appreciate the time and I uh, hope you find it interesting because the world is changing. You know, we're in a brave new world with this, let alone as SSDs get more mature. Yes? kind of already happening with some of them that are having, the, the question is about when, when do drives get way too big that you can't actually rebuild them in, in, in real time. We're kind of getting there because a lot of people have had trouble with the one terabyte and two terabyte drives and then they'll say, oh wow, we're just going to solve it with RAID 6. RAID 6 is just something that it makes rebuild times even potentially even take longer. Um, RAID, the proper RAID solution should be chosen based on the uncorrectable error rate of drives, not, not just to cover what they may do inefficiently with their storage. The interesting part, if you look at roadmaps and stuff, two and a half, the two and a half inch crossover to where three and a half has become no longer needed will probably be in the next few years. And I think that, that will change because the two and a halfs can really solve a lot of things because you get back to a smaller footprint and a smaller density so it makes it easier to do things. We change the rules on that to do rebuilds so we can still handle some of the larger drives as they get up to say three terabytes or so. Um, because we do things in parallel. Plus, we only rebuild what we, what we use. You know, a lot of people, a lot of arrays don't know what's all been used out there because they're dealing with things from blocks. They don't have all that knowledge. We do. Plus, we can map around different pieces of drives and not have to take the whole thing away. That's, once again, changing rules. Good question. Well, listen, thanks a lot. And uh, there's a survey. I think that if you go down here, I think I've got stuff here. There you go. Fill out a survey on your mobile device. There you go. I love it. Take it easy. Thanks a lot.